So we're going to spend some time talking about GDB, the GNU debugger, which is what you'll be using in the bomb lab. And I'm going to orient this discussion around the user manual, which I've got here as a PDF. And I've put a bunch of annotations in here to highlight those portions of the, of the um, manual that you really need to pay attention to. Uh, so I'm going to just use these annotations as a way to structure the, the discussion. So uh, just by way of summary, at the very beginning of this manual, uh, it talks about kind of the four basic features of what GDB does and what you can do with it. The first of these is that you can use GDB, of course, to start your program. So the program that you're debugging, in this case it'll be your bomb program, is going to be started up by GDB and it's going to execute under GDB's control. Once the program is started, you can also set it up such that you can cause it to stop in certain positions. So for example, if you want to stop to step through the execution of the code, you can do that. If you want to prevent uh, execution, for example, of the explode function in your bomb lab, you can set up uh, a breakpoint to stop execution and so forth. You can also examine what's happening in your program. So the ability, you have the ability to um, uh, look at the assembly language, look at the registers, look at memory. We'll see how to do all that stuff. You can also make changes to your program. So you can actually change the program while you're debugging it by monkeying with contents of memory and registers and stuff, which we aren't going to talk about too much because it's not really necessary for this lab and is sort of, sort of dangerous to do. <laughs> um, not dangerous in the sense of harming your computer or anything like that, but it, uh, it can go, go sideways really quickly. So, um, I'm going to just kind of breeze through some of these commands and then I'm going to go through them in more detail and demonstrate them here in a second. But this uh, first section here uh, in the manual just gives you a quick walk through the kinds of things that you can do in GDB. So um, here's just a couple of examples. So I said before that you can set a command that causes the execution of your program to stop at a specific location. That would be the break command. Uh, to set breakpoints. There's also a run command to fire things off at the, at the beginning of execution. Um, once you've stopped your program at a breakpoint, there's a couple of different ways of uh, advancing the execution of the program. So the next command up here will uh, run the, the next, uh, or run the code to the next line of the program. There's also a function called step that also goes to the next line of execution. The difference is that next will skip over function calls and step will actually go into function calls. So if you're moving along in your debugger and you want to go to the next instruction, uh, but in case the next instruction is actually a function call, you if you just want to have that function execute and not debug inside the function, you can use next. Whereas if you want to actually go into the function and see how it's behaving uh, while it's executing, you can use step. Once you've uh, gotten yourself into the execution of your program and you want to sort of figure out where are you, uh, what function are you in, and what did you get called from, and what did that get called from, the backtrace function uh, gives you a lot of information about that. So this is basically, if you think back to the discussion about stack frames when we were talking about how functions get called and how they return, this basically allows you to list the currently active stack frames uh, so you can see kind of where you are and where you've come from. We can inspect the contents of, uh, of memory. So we can do it at the source level if we have source, source, source information in our uh, compiled executable uh, with the print command. Uh, we can also look at the contents of the source code itself if we have that available with the list command. Then um, if we're uh, done single stepping through our code with next or step, and we want to just let the program run either to completion or to the next time it hits a breakpoint, you can use the continue command. Okay, so that's kind of a really super brief introduction to the kinds of things that you can do inside of GDB. And we're going to kind of slow this down a little bit and take a look at uh, how these things actually work in practice uh, with the example from the bomb lab. So I'm going to switch over here to my terminal window. I'm just logged into one of the machines in 218 and I just requested a bomb just like you've been doing to do the lab assignment. So you can see here my bomb.c file, the readme, 
Um, so the, the bomb itself is just a binary executable. Um, it, it includes both the, the bomb itself is actually compiled and the, the source information and debugging information is largely stripped out of that file. So you're sort of forced to read the assembly code, which is kind of the point. But we also give you a copy of the bomb.c file. So if you look at um, bomb.c, this is just kind of the top level driver. It has quite a lot of information about uh, how the how the bomb is supposed to go. It's all done under the guise of this uh, nefarious Dr. Evil character. Uh, so it is definitely worth reading through this to try to understand what's going on uh, at the top level. Uh, eventually, the, the, the bomb uh, gets down to the running the individual phases. So there's an initialization step, and then it runs phase one, phase two, phase three, and so forth. Uh, and, um, eventually gets to, if you survive all of the different steps in the bomb um, it gets down to the last statement here and then returns a zero back to the operating system note that there's a, a, a nef another nefarious comment here from dr evil that you might want to pay attention to okay so getting in and out of gdb how do we get this thing started i'll clear this out so to start gdb you type gdb and then the name of the of the uh, file that you're trying to debug. And you get quite a lot of really obnoxious copyright information. <laughs> you can circumvent that if you want by saying dash Q for quiet, and then it just starts up the debugger. Now, once we're here, so that's, that's how we get into GDB. When we want to get out, we can do one of two things. We can type quit, that takes us back out, or we can actually just type control D, which is the end of, end of file character in ASCII, and that drops us back out to the command line as well. Okay, quitting. Oh, one other thing, uh, here in the uh, in the manual, Q or Q quit takes us out of GDB altogether and back to the command line. So if we are in the middle of running our, our code and we tried to, and we did a quit, uh, I think if it's actually the code is running, uh, GDB will ask you if you really want to quit because it doesn't want you to lose any information. Uh, but if you do want to quit, um, it'll it'll stop the co uh, stop your program's execution and, and take you back to the command line. It's also possible that you want to stop the execution of your program while you're inside of GDB and remain inside of GDB. And you can do that by uh, issuing the interrupt command. So control C uh, won't exit you out of GDB, but it will stop the program that's being debugged. Um, one of the things that you'll see in the manual is it refers to the program that you're debugging as the inferior program. Uh, that's not a value judgment about your code. It's just the fact that GDB is the main program that's running, and then it runs inside of itself, essentially, uh, your program. So that inferior program is your code, and that's the one that's impacted by uh, invoking Control-C at the, at the GDB prompt. Um, you can also, if you're inside a GDB and you want to inspect something outside, you can run shell commands from inside of GDB. So uh, let me get back into GDB. Notice that there's a GDB prompt. That's just a standard prompt. And if I want to look at something in my directory, say I just want to do an ls, I can prefix that ls command with an exclamation mark, and that will print out my uh, directory contents. So if you just want to do a quick command without... Uh, exiting GDB or putting it in the background, you can run shell commands right inside of GDB itself. Okay. You can abbreviate commands in GDB. So for example, uh, we could type quit and then that takes us out. But in many cases, if there is a non-overlapping prefix of a command name, like just Q or QUI, for example, that will actually execute the quit command because there's no other commands in GDB that start QUI. Uh, if you want to see what commands are available uh, at the command line, you can actually do command completion. So if I type just Q and then hit tab, you can see, well, there's some QU commands apparently. If I hit tab again, it'll tell me that Q signal and quit are the two things that start with QU. So QU isn't enough to unambiguously specify which command is to be executed. So if I want to execute one of these things, I got to give it some more information about what command I'm interested in. And if I hit tab, I get the quick command. 
So you can abbreviate command names to suit. And there's also some um, there's also some abbreviations that are built into GDB that you'll see as you go that aren't necessarily just prefixes of the command, but um, still allow you to, to uh, execute common commands more uh, more easily. Um, let's see a blank line. If you just hit return basically tells GDB to repeat the previous command. So let me um, uh, let me get back into GDB and I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna use the list command and we'll talk about this a little bit more later but this is just going to list out the source code that I have ac access to here. You can see that it's showing me the beginning of the bomb.c code. Now again that's the only source code that you have available to you inside the bomb lab. All of the bomb itself and other support code is just compiled into into assembly, and all of the debugging information is removed in order to force you to look at the assembly code. Uh, but this top-level bomb.c driver file is available to you, and you can see it its uh, contents inside a GDB. But what I really want to try to illustrate here is the notion that if you just hit return, GDB basically repeats the mo the most recently executed command. Uh, and in, in this case, so list defaults to showing you 10 lines of code around the current the current line. And since we haven't really started execution of this thing, the current line is just sort of the default here. Um, but when I hit list again, it now shows me the next 10 lines. And if I hit list, or if I hit return again, it's going to run the list command again and show me the next 10 lines. So anytime you want to repeat a command, you can just hit return and it'll run exactly the same command as previously. In some cases, so for example, in this, when you're doing single stepping, if you just want to single step and then do the same single step again, you can hit return. And I'll show you an example of that. Um, in some commands, like the list command here, it doesn't do exactly the same thing. It's showing us different lines from the file. But in a few cases, that auto repeat behavior that you get by just hitting return will um, will sort of do the right thing or the expected thing. In other cases, it literally just does exactly the same command. Okay. Again, you can uh, hit the tab key whenever you're looking for some kind of command completion that works with, with arguments and so forth uh, as well. Um, here's an important command, obviously, as you're learning something, is that you can type help. And GDB will give you a list of sort of categories of commands or classes of commands, they call it. And this is, uh, this is information that um, you can use to learn or check your understanding of different of the commands. So you can, uh, in the case of these top-level classes, you can say help, uh, say, breakpoints. Um, uh, and that will give you a list of all of the breakpoint-related commands. There are many of them, but don't freak out. Uh, you can also get help on a specific command instead of that category. So if, again, if you just type help, you get this list of classes of commands. But if you type help break, which is a command, and now it just tells you about the break command. And there's, it's a very um, often used command, so it's got a lot of capabilities. But again, don't, don't freak out about the, the level of detail. You just always have access to that help. Don't, uh, don't forget about that. Uh, another command that you can use pretty regularly is called the info command. And info actually has a bunch of subcommands. So if you hit two tabs, it shows you all these different subcommands. Uh, let's just run one that we'll come back to later. R info registers. Um, well, this program has no registers now because it's not running yet. Um, but that would give you a list of the contents of all of the machine registers. So info and then any of these other um, these other arguments are going to give you more detail about your program. There's also a, sh a command that sounds awfully similar called show. What it does is gives you information about GDB. So if you want to look at some information about the, the version of GDB that you're running, for example, you can say show version. Um, and that will give you the detailed information about what version you're running and other copyright information that are part of the part of the program. So info tells you about your program, show tells you about GDB itself and how it's configured. Okay. 
Now, you don't have much choice about this for the bomb lab, but this is good to know about uh, for other uses of, of the, the debugger. Normally, when you want to use the debugger with your code during development, for example, you need to compile it in such a way that the compiler includes with the output of the compile additional information, including the source code lines, the, um, the variables, the function names, that kind of stuff needs to, or you want, you're asking basically for all that information to be included in your executable so that sometime later, even if you don't have the source code right handy, you can just say GDB in the name of your program and all that information is going to actually be in the executable. And to do that, you uh, normally just compile with a dash G flag. That's just the standard GNU C compiler flag that says turn on all that debugging information. And there's a bunch of different nuances to turning on debugging information at compile time, but just dash G gives you all of the functionality that you probably reasonably care about. Now, for the bomb lab, we've given you the bomb.c file, and that's compiled essentially with this dash G file, but the other code, like the bomb itself, has it still has, is a C program, but it's been compiled without this dash G information. So although you can single step through the source code of, of um, bomb.c, like I've been showing you, which you know, isn't really that helpful because you already have access to bomb.c itself. Um, you can't do that with the rest of the rest of the bomb because it doesn't include this debugging information. So it's kind of an artificial thing for the purposes of this lab. In practice, you would turn on dash G for all of your code that you could ever want to have access to directly at debug time. Okay, but I just wanted to mention that before we get too carried away here. All right, once we've, um, let me just back out of here again to give us a clean slate, uh, get back into GDB with the bomb. Remember that Q just says, don't give me all that verbose copyright information. Uh, in order to run this thing, we, uh, we just use the command run. Well, let's see what happens. Okay, so it says it's starting the program. Welcome to the fiendish little bomb. There's six phases. Have a nice day. Now it's waiting for me to type something in on standard input. So if I just say something like uh, foo, well, that's probably not the string to defuse the first phase of the bomb. So boom, it blows up, which that's okay. Um, and apparently I've notified myself about this. Uh, you can see a couple of, so all this information that shows up here in the standard output is coming from the, the bomb program until this very last line. This is actually coming from GDB. Again, I mentioned that the program that's under execution inside of GDB is called the inferior program. So that's actually my bomb program. It tells me what process ID it had during its life and then what, it, what uh, exit code it returned back to the, uh, to the shell with. Uh, and then um, I'm done with, uh, with debugging that thing. So that's a way that you can just fire it up and let it, let it go. Now, because every time you hit one of, these, uh, one of these explode points because you failed to debug a phase of the bomb, uh, you're gonna, uh, it's going to register a, a point off on the scoreboard. So I don't recommend that you just jump in there and hit run. Uh, but that's how, you, that's how you do it, and I'll show you how to, how to get around that in a second. Um, there's a whole variety of different values that you can pass to the to the run command, one of which is the command line arguments that you want to have available to your program. And um, you can do that by just adding additional parameters at the end of your of your run command. So if you want to run and you want to give it the name of your of your solutions file as you're working on it, you can just say run and then the name of the file. Uh, and that'll load it in, uh, well, that will give the information to the bomb program such that it can load in the solutions and uh, tick off however many phases you've listed in the solutions file. Okay. Um, another, so let me, let's look at another way to get this guy started without running afoul of the, of the uh, explosion. So, we know that C programs by default always have an entry function called main. And if I say list, again, we can use this list thing to, to list out the source code. You can also uh, give list, um, well, you can, you can give it line numbers. I can say list one, 
and that will start listening at the beginning of the file. Or you can give it function names. So list main will list the source code around the main function, as you can see right here. Um, in order to prevent the program from running immediately to completion and causing an explosion, uh, one of the things you can do is put in a breakpoint. And we'll talk about this in more detail, but here's a simple breakpoint. One of the ways that you can set up a breakpoint is to just name a function. So I'll, just like list main, I can say break main. Um, and that says, okay, I've set breakpoint number one at a particular location, file bomb.c line 37. Uh, it's actually the curly brace here in the source code, but um, that's the beginning of the executable part of the of the um, the main function. So now if I say run, it starts as before, prints out this, the pro starting program message, but then it breaks at this location. So it's now stopped at breakpoint run one, main the main function at bomb.c line 37. And then it um, shows me the current line that's about to be executed. So that's one of the ways you can use a breakpoint, and this obviously would allow me to now do other stuff to go in and inspect the, the contents and behavior of the program to try to diffuse the, the bomb. So I type quit here, and for the first time when I was trying to quit, we've actually got an active inferior program. The bomb program is out there. It's kind of in suspended animation right now because we're at a breakpoint. But if I quit out of GDB, it's going to also quit the program that I'm trying to debug. So if I don't want to do that, it, GDB gives me a, a little warning to say, are you really sure that you want to have this thing killed off? Uh, and in this case, I'm fine with that because I haven't really done any work. But uh, So I'm going to just say yes. And then it takes me back out to the shell. Instead of going through all those steps to kind of get set up at the beginning of your debugging session to uh, prevent the program from running to the end immediately, GDB provides another command called start that essentially sets a breakpoint at the beginning of the, the main procedure and then does the run. So it sort of does the breakpoint and then gets you to the very beginning of your program. If I go back to my shell here, you can see uh, run the bomb, and then I'm just going to say start. And you can see it says there's a temporary breakpoint number one at bomb.c line 37. So it knows that the beginning of your program is always going to be the main function, and it puts a breakpoint there. Notice it says it's a temporary breakpoint, which means that it's going to just activate one time, and then it deletes itself. So the breakpoint that we set before with the break command was a persistent breakpoint that's going to remain in place. And if we try to execute that same location in our source code at a later time, it's also going to break. However, for a temporary breakpoint, which you can set to just do a one-time break, uh, that is going to remove itself automatically. And that's what's going on here. So after we stop here at the location of the beginning of the main function, we won't uh, see that breakpoint anymore. If I list out my source code, can see that we're currently at line 37, which again is the beginning of the main function. Again, you can pass additional arguments which you want to show up in the in the command line parameters of the main function if you'd like by just adding them on to the end of the run function. So you don't do that when you're starting up GDB. That what you're doing when you start GDB is saying, which program do I want you to debug? Once you've started the program under the debugger, that's when your program can get access to the command line arguments that you've passed to the run command. Here's another helpful command that you can use to get information about what's going on in your program called info program. Again, this is an info command, which gives you information about your code. And that tells us, we're using a running image of a child process. That's the process ID. It tells us the address that we're stopped at and that we're at a breakpoint that has since been deleted. That's the notion of this temporary breakpoint. So we can get, and GDB gives us these little hints, info stack or info registers for more information. Well, let's see what those things do. Info stack. Well, there's the current runtime stack. There's just one stack frame on the stack. It's the main function where we're currently stopped. How about info registers? 
well, there's all the contents of our registers. So RX, RBX, RCX, and so forth, all the way through. And it tells us the values in both uh, hexadecimal and by, uh, decimal. <laughs> it gives us information about the flags that are set and some other things. You can f find out, if you're interested in learning more about that, of course, you would say help info registers. And then it tells you some information about the registers.